Good morning, everybody. Today we're going to talk about how superstructure did in this week's trades in crude oil, S and P, and gold. These are the three markets that I personally look for patterns to day trade. Okay. Now these are patterns that I'm looking at, and and you'll see the simplicity of it in a second. Okay. Just some housekeeping things. This is uh, just some disclaimer, disclosures. Trading futures is risky. You should uh, basically trade with money you can afford to risk. Hello, everybody. My name is Ken W. Chow. And for this session, we want to talk how, <clears throat> how did superstructure trading do this week in the markets. Okay. And I'm going to show you what happened this week based on some of the tools that we have okay so I'll show you this week's trades in a second <laughs> but before we start people always ask me this question what size chart should I trade I know you day trade I like the five minute you use the five or is it the three minute chart that you use or is it the ten minute chart which chart should you use have you thought about that question well my answer is all of them all of them you even use like a seven minute chart and a nine minute chart well not exactly I don't quite go there because you know you'll be too anal and too crazy if you were to do that but here is a general thinking from the perspective of looking for a good trade when you're trading either day trading or swing trading okay again this is just the thinking that you need in order to address this very question you got to know the general bias. <laughs> is the market down or up? Should I be leaning long or short? Now, this is from the large chart. As a day trader, the large chart could be the 30-minute chart or the 60-minute chart going back to last night or a couple of days. You know, where's the beginning part of that pattern. Okay? So once you get the general bias, I should be leaning long. Okay? Then what? Then you need to look for a general zone in which to enter. This is the medium chart. So what you do is you zoom in. You have a general idea of what you want to do. Now you go from a, a 60 or 30 minute chart down to a 15 or a 10 minute chart if you're a day trader or a 7 minute chart or a 9. It doesn't matter. Or a 11 minute chart. You can slice it any which way. But the idea is to zoom in and get a a look at the general zone once you have that then you want to confirm and adjust that zone as the market trades closer and closer <laughs> this is where the small chart comes in I go as as low as the one minute chart once I have the zone and the bias intact okay once I have a zone and a bias I'm gonna think where am I gonna enter where is my entry price? Now, if you can confirm and adjust, you can do different strategies, okay, to, to maybe get in on one contract and add two more and different things. But the idea is just to get you thinking in terms of the bigger thing and you zooming in. Let me give you an example. If you want to find a, a friend or a loved one that's lost, he went out somewhere and he's lost, what do you do? You want to see what city he's in, and then what neighborhood he's in, and then what street. Then you go down to look for the actual house. All right, it's, that's one example. Okay, another example is if you're a doctor trying to see if this guy has, God forbid, cancer or some disease. You look at his face and see if he's gray. You go closer and put a, a thing on his heart to test, hear what his heart's looking like. And then you go for a biopsy and take a small piece of that heart tissue and look under a microscope, right? So you, you go from big to small. So that's the general thinking. Okay, let's see what it is that we're looking for when we do this process. The market goes up, it pulls back. This is called a retracement. It's another follow-through in the same direction. And usually it'll have another retracement and then finally one more. Now. 
if you recognize this as looking like at the Elliott wave, you would be right. Now, superstructure trading, which is my trading methodology, isn't a pure super uh, um, Elliott wave. It's not even a version of the Elliott wave, but we share some of the same principles. That's all I can say. This is basically zigzagging up. This is an uptrend. This is also an uptrend. This is also an uptrend. Wait, what's the difference between this and this? Well, let me just go over the components that make up this up move here, okay? It is a measure move. A, B equals C, D in general. Now again, that's not always the case as a market will turn and have different things influencing it. But here's the measure move that that makes up those zigging and zagging upward move, okay? Now, this measure move is the cornerstone, the foundation of the approach. It's very simple. Nothing too complicated about it. But the key thing that you want to look at is point C. Point C is the most important part of the measure move. Why is that? <coughs> because of trend strength. This is what we want to really understand. If you want to see the market going up, that's fine. How strong is it going up? Is it going down? Okay. Is it going down strong or weak? This is called trend, trend strength. Not volume, not indicated reading, not anything that is derived from price, but price itself, price pattern itself. So trend strength is something that not too many other traders talk about. <clears throat> they say, oh, this move has a high volume. What, what does that mean? High? How much higher? Three times higher? Four and a half times the volume? 4.2 times? How much is higher volume? How much is higher? Okay, you can't, higher than what? Higher than the previous two-minute bar or last hour's volume? Again, you're talking about, you know, I agree that you have high volume, but you can't really hang your head on it. But in this case, you can using these patterns, okay? So it works the same way in the downtrend. Here's a downtrend. Lower highs, lower lows. Well, so this is also a downtrend. What's the difference between this one and this one? Well, let me show you. You have a deep retracement on that bounce, which I call a retracement. There's another deep retracement. When you have deep retracement, this downtrend is considered a weak downtrend. Well, a weak downtrend is good for what? For picking lows. If you have some area there, again, some zone there that you think will bounce, having a weak downtrend into that zone will confirm that that's a good place to go long. Now, going back to this pattern here, again, a downtrend. But wait a minute. We have a shallow retracement. What's shallow? Less than a 50% bounce against the previous down leg. And, oh, again, another shallow retracement. Now, this is called a strong downtrend. If you have something like this coming into a zone in order to buy on a chart, don't do it. Don't do it. Why? Because chances are, the trend may continue. Okay? What you're saying is, you might be catching a falling knife if you have a strong trend coming into your face. I don't, I'm not looking at volume. I'm not looking at any reading. This is just simple chart pattern. Lower highs, lower lows. Again, this is looking like the Elliott wave, but this is different twist and Turning is a different variation of that, okay? So these are the tools that we look for. So that gives you the general idea as far as what you want to do coming into a, to a, uh, an area. Now, this thing works in all markets, in all time intervals. Effective in day trading, swing trading, or position trading, okay? Now, what do we do next? You want to look for powerful Fibonacci ratios. Now we just simplify these ratios. Why Fibonacci ratios? They're natural numbers. They're very powerful if used properly. They can also be very confusing because there are very a lot of them, okay? For example, you have a 38% retracement. It's also a 
78.6, that's also a Fibonacci number. How about 127? 161? Which one should I use? There's so many. How do I mix and match? Well, here's the answer. What you want to do is focus on just the most extreme extensions. These most extreme extension numbers is what would lock in the, the, the deal. Okay, So these are the two numbers that you want to focus in on, that I focus on. Okay, That simplifies things. You don't have that many moving parts. Okay, So we want to look for Fibonacci ratios, but only after analyzing the depth of the retracement. Again, that deep or shallow situation, right? So these are the two that you want to do. All right, let's talk about this week's trades without further ado. Okay. Uh, by the way, we're going to review what we did two weeks ago. I did the same type of Saturday morning uh, uh, presentation two weeks ago. And in that presentation, I showed this chart of sugar. This is the daily chart. Okay. Now, notice back here, we have a deep retracement. We call that the dominant deep. Now, this was coming down already. I wrote this down. If you were here two weeks ago, showing you know the charts that, uh, the trades that were there at that moment in time i had a probable route looking like this at 1883 what just happened as of yesterday friday here's the updated chart for real see this is on 118 see i underlined the date there this was yesterday now the previous one october 24th okay see that up here it was october 24th that I did this chart two weeks ago, about two weeks ago, I think. So in two weeks, again, daily chart, we move down here. Now, if you look at this on a smaller time interval chart, there were shallow retracements. Here's a shallow retracement right there. Okay, so what does that mean? I think it's going to go down some more. But back then, two weeks ago, I drew these bounces like this i didn't know what they were going to do but i just do some middle deep retracement well if the result is that it is very very shallow then this thing may work its way even lower again different levels of confirmation is important <laughs> here's the thing that i did for thursday's situation this is the uh, s p uh thursday Okay, this was done before market open. Up here you can see uh, at 5.49 a.m. Pacific time, okay, the 7th of November. At that moment in time, we had a bunch of 461 extensions. Again, there are exact rules as to how to pull these things up, exact rules as to which levels you want to extend up and which ones you want to avoid, okay? Up here, before the market open, uh, possible drop, okay? It had a, re had a retest here, and then this thing should drop. Let's see what happened as the after shot, okay? This is the before shot. Ooh, look what happened here. This is the market on that same day. Having a, a quite a bit of drop, okay? So I'm going to show you this week without going into a lot of details because a lot of you guys may not understand this yet. But the key that I like to look for are these 461s. Now, we never use one number. That's why over here, like I showed on this example, I have several of them sprayed all over the place. Why? Because of the rule of confluence, the rule of each one of these reinforcing each other. Okay? Now, how do you know? what the exact high is. You can take the average and pick the high and short it when it's going up. Or you can do what I call a secondary entry. What's a secondary entry? Well, if the market turns around around this price, again, you're not here to pick it. You're not here to say, what's that price here? You're going to look at this on, let's say, not a 15-minute chart, but a five-minute chart. And somewhere in that high, in that area, you witness something like this. I'm going to draw it out for you, okay? You witness something 
here, okay? Then you see this. Okay. Whatever this high is, the market has just shown you that it wants to roll over. Now, for those of you who know other patterns, this is like a head and shoulders, right? This is a lower high, lower low downtrend, whereas in before it was high lows, higher highs. That's what a that's what a head and shoulders is, nothing more than that. But instead of picking the head, you're going to pick the breaking of the neckline around this zone. So you don't see it here on the 15-minute chart, but there was some um, lower highs, lower lows right here being made at the, on a smaller time interval chart if you were to zoom in. And once you see that happening, that's it. That's the market tipping its hand that this is the high. Now you want to put a stop above the high, which is the head in the head and shoulders. Okay. Instead of calling it a head and shoulders, I'm just calling it an uptrend, high lows, higher highs, finishing up with a high and then reversing to a lower high, lower low downtrend. Now from here, we can go down like this. We can test the high and we can work our way lower. And that in this zone of 461 extreme extensions is where that likely follow through to the downside will, will be done. So again, here is the, uh, I'm just throwing in one 461 there. I can go from a 15 minute chart down to a five minute chart. And can you see lower highs, lower lows? Okay. This is the beginning of a downtrend. Now, how far down could this thing go? Depends on how deep the retracements are. Okay. So I'm going to go on a two minute chart and show you by, by converting this two minute chart, I'm just going to show you how the rule of trend strength or, or not the rule but the idea of trend strength and, and you know there are specific rules how to do this how deep is that guy how deep is this guy again these two are uh, shallow so th this has a lot more downward move now over here we got deeper can you see it deeper here okay therefore this drop is coming to an end or at least a pause okay so you might want to take profits once you see deeper and deeper showing up see that that's a deep retracement here so so it moves up over here and then we make another leg down over here so this is what this one is now let me show you another market in in uh, crude oil now remember what we just did here and and the, the pattern that we're talking about okay we have some deeps here extending up to a bunch of 461 on a 15 minute chart all right so I'm going to go, oops, hang on. I'm going to go to uh, crude oil. I did this chart earlier. Okay. On a 15 minute chart hourly chart okay or you can go somewhere in between let's say i'm just gonna go on a 20 minute chart this is this goes to show you that it doesn't really matter if you go 20 or 25 minute chart okay this was uh monday into tuesday i'm gonna draw i'm gonna po first of all point out that we have some deep retracements here okay now once we get down to there In terms of 461s, again, these are extreme extensions, and these are very, very uh, reliable once you have a setup ready, okay? Now, we're using confluence, which means averaging. We're going to average all of these extensions. Now, which, what, what, you can either take out a calculator and average them in, <coughs> or... You can do that head and shoulders thing that we talked about, but now inverted head and shoulders, right? So what that means is on this 20-minute chart, now I purposely use a 20-minute chart. You can see it on a 15 or a 19-minute, doesn't matter, okay? This is a larger chart going from the fourth into the fifth. Now from here, down here somewhere, again, it could be here, 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 where it bottomed out, you will see the market going a higher, low, higher, high. Well, you can see it over here, right? 
Okay, you can even see it on a, on a chart. Once you see that, then you know that's a turn. That's a turn where you have A, B, C, D, high lows, higher highs. Now, once that happens, you want to look at to see where point C is coming off of this low, which is the right shoulder, if you will, for those of you who like head and shoulders. Now, if this pullback as a retracement is not very deep, not very deep compared to these guys off of these highs, then you know that it's coming off of deeps, but it's bouncing off of a shallow. Once that happens, guess what? The rest of the move up, boom, look at this move. Okay. Now, you don't need to catch the whole thing. You can catch bits and pieces of it. But the bottom line is that over here somewhere, you'll see the market making a motion to the upside around this cluster of 461s. You can actually take a calculator out, or I, what I do is I have a spreadsheet on Excel to give me the zone. Again, again that's talk, talk, talking about the zone, and then we can zoom in from a 20-minute or 15-minute down to a 5 or a 1. Let me go down to a 5. When you're zooming in, what you're saying is, I have that area there. Let me see confirmation of that area playing out the way I get to, to, to do. Okay? So on the five-minute chart, what are you looking for? Confirmation. Confirmation comes in the form of a higher low, higher high. By the way, you don't want to jump down to the one-minute chart right away. Okay? You don't want to go from like a 60 or 10-minute chart down to a one. Here's a higher low, higher high on the five-minute chart. This is, again, the larger the pattern, the more meaningful it is. Look, prior to this, to this area here, it was all lower highs, lower lows. Okay? Right. So over here is where it finally turned the corner. And after this is happening, the low should be in. The low should be in. So you can buy it here. In fact, this low a lot of times will hold as well. But this low is definitely in because the market made a motion that, hey, we want to go up. We're going to go up from here. So instead of picking in a, a, the actual low here, let the market tip its hand in the zone. The zone is the general larger zone. The bias is all those deeps. Okay. So what we're saying is that this thing will have legs to go to the upside because that guy is not very, very deep to begin with. Right? So you have all these little clues as to which way you want to go. And then from here, you could buy on pullbacks and, and so forth. Right? So what we have here is a lot of different uh, things. Now, I'm going to go to another one, gold. This is gold. And I'm going to go on a daily chart of gold. All right? Here's a daily chart of gold. Now, gold, over the last couple of months, has been down. Why do I say down? Lower highs, lower lows. That's, that's a, by definition, a downtrend. But I want to bring this move right here to you on a large daily chart. This high, A. This is B. This is C. And we made a move below there. Okay, now, what just happened here? This is a daily chart, so each bar is one day. What just happened there you made a lower high lower low now how deep is that retracement not very deep now this being a daily chart gives the bias to think short yesterday this is friday okay yesterday i was in it to think short now yesterday friday had a jobs report pre-market so it knocked it down quite a bit well what i don't see anything here that's where we zoom in from a daily chart we'll zoom into let's say a 60 minute chart with this whole bias and and look at this downward move as shown by as, as caused by that uh jobs report once that happens and this is early in the drop okay i can think short the bias is short and then i can lead into getting in on an entry now if i zoom in one step further Go down to the 15-minute chart. I'm on the 15-minute chart right now. 
do you see the same theme? What theme are we talking about? The theme of downtrend. But right there. This is a shallow retracement on the 15-minute chart in that whole bearish environment shown by the daily chart. Again, this drop was brought to you by that uh, 5.30 in the morning California time jobs report. I, I don't read the jobs report. I don't listen to the news. But I'm aware that that's going to move the market in one way or another. I'm not going to try to interpret it and think, oh, the jobs report was 2% higher than expected. Therefore, no, no, no. I, I'm not going to go into that, all that. But what I am aware of is, hey, it's here. It can cause a move. Uh, yep, I see it going down. I'm almost like a counter puncher, all right? And with this big drop here, can there be some more downward move left? That's all I'm saying. The answer is yes. And I actually took a short there. I'll show you guys that in a, in a minute, okay? So this is what we mean by applying superstructure. The structure zoom from down here to down here. Now, again, the easy question is, oh, how far down should it go, right? This is where Fibonacci ratios come in again, okay? Like this is, I'm on a 15-minute chart, so it's an approximation, right? It's an approximation. It's not accuracy. Now, how come it missed it there? What's the easy answer? I don't know. <laughs> no, the answer is because the downward trend has slowed down as we're trying to reach it. Does that make sense? We're going down at this moment in time right here. Right when we break through here, this is heading towards this area here. Would it make it or would it short be short-changed? That depends on how it gets there as it's getting there. If you look at the move from, from here, there's still quite a few dollars to be made. Again, this is like 200 bucks, $2. Every dollar is like 100 bucks. Okay? So I'm going to show you my entry right about there. Okay, this is uh, a classic example of how the larger chart sends the, uh, sets, sets up the pattern, and then the smaller chart confirms it, and and, and, and suggest that it is still intact. But when this downward move misses the 261, which is one of the, one of the two extensions I use, then, well, let me rephrase it. As we're heading towards this area for me to take profits, the fact that we're slowing down, I'm gonna show you that in a second, what, what that means by slowing down. You're not gonna see it on the, five, on the 15 minute chart. You're not gonna see it on the five minute chart, okay? Again, we're talking about this zone here as it is approaching this area here. I'm going to make it color-wise, this obnoxious green color, okay, so you know which I'm talking about. That leg coming in either is going to show you strength, downtrend strength, or weakening of downtrend. All right, let's go. I'm going to go down to the one minute, and here we go. This is what I do every day. Okay, and and it is not that hard. Here, here's the leg. Okay, now I want you to keep an eye out on that leg, and and here's that red line there. That's where the target profit target is. Remember, retracement is what fifty percent is a cutoff, give or take, as far as deep or shallow. That's, this is deep. This is even deeper. That's deep. That's still deep. More than 50%. So we have several deeps coming in. Well, it's not going to be able to stretch down to here. In fact, it's going to go higher lows, higher highs. Boom. Now, if you're short, you better get out right here because of this slowing down of deep. Again, let me draw it out for you. If you look like this, Hold on to your short, okay? If it's like this, hold on. Uh oh, what's this? What's this? Now, now you better get the heck out right, right about there, okay? Because now it's going to do this. See what I'm saying? So if you keep on maintaining shallow, shallow, your the downtrend is intact and it's still strong. But you see deeper and deeper, like here, 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 and here, 
this red line, you better get the heck out. If this, if this thing actually makes a higher high, first early warning sign that you may want to really get out because this is an up move, at least locally, right? So even a downtrend that was strong could have deceleration, meaning the slowing down of trend strength. Make sense? Uh, sugar was going up. What tipped you off of the downtrend in sugar? Good question. Let me go down to sugar to, to show uh, Mariano. Now, remember what I talked about in terms of uh, extreme extension? This big, look at this move up. This move up, very, very strong. <clears throat> Now, is this a very strong to get on board because it's going up, or is this a blow off up where it's the last gas of air and then boom, everything goes down? Which one is it? Well, if you're looking at that one bar and the volume there, you're not going to know. It has a lot of volume, but is that volume to kick up even higher, or should you go short it into the high volume? That's why I don't look at volume. But what I do look at are Fibonacci ratios given the right setup. Now, the dominant structure here is very deep. That's the most important coming off this low, okay? If you look at it, it is almost 100% deep. It's not quite 100%, it's like 95% deep, okay? By the way, we layer all of these patterns in, these measure moves, and then we apply Fibonacci ratio. So let me do that for you guys. Now, the most extreme example, uh, the most extreme extension is the 461. Well, that one didn't get hit. Why should I, I, should, I should be waiting for that to get hit, right? No, we never ever use one Fibonacci number. We want to use a bunch of them as they collude or as, as they combine or they uh, confluence to, to eat with each other. So what we're saying is we're averaging all of these 461s, Mariano, okay? As we look at these 461s and you average them in, Notice how, by, uh, as a side note, notice how this retracement got deeper and then deeper. This is a shallow retracement right there. This is like a more than 50%, but this retracement was even deeper against this leg here, right? So you got deeper and deeper retracement coming into a bunch of 461s. 461s are the most extreme Fibonacci ratios. Now, you can take a calculator out and take the average and see where the center point, center of gravity is for all of these 461s. Or, after it blows off here, you can zoom in on a smaller chart, which I'm going to do right now, and wait for it to tip its hand, meaning lower highs, lower lows. Daily chart now turns into an hourly chart. On the hourly chart, Mariano, I'm going to go down here. There's that blow off top right there. Okay, let me squish it together so you can see, right? So there's a big zoom to the upside. Now, you can actually average even more 461s here. I call these supporting structures, okay? Now, some of the 461s are blown, like this one. Some of the 461s are short-changed, okay? But the average would be somewhere in here. Now, if you don't want to catch it on the fly when it's making a move up, what you want to do is wait for the market to tip its hand right there right there you have a lower high lower low this high is lower than that high this new low here just made a low below this low here right at that area here around 1920 it's going down now if you see shallow retracement shallow retracement it's going it's going to maintain the down move so we know how to get in this is called secondary entry. Primary entry is catching it on the fly. And then we know how to manage it as you ride out a pivot, shallow, shallow, shallow. You're looking at riding it out to a, to a, because the trend is still intact, right? The trend is still, let me show you. Okay. So this is how I know. 
that this downtrend is intact, okay? So how we look at these patterns. So we have some good, good trades, well, some other trades too, but I won't have time to go through that. <laughs> Again, I call this superstructure trading. We're using a lot of structures here, a lot of patterns, patterns upon patterns, but they're all predicated upon the same thing, how deep, how shallow, and off of these patterns, we take extreme Fibonacci ratios, and we kind of leave the other ones out. Why? Because not every all Fibonacci ratios are created equal. Now, I want to talk about my ebook. Some of you guys may have this ebook, but this ebook would talk about all of these uh, things in details. Okay, I disclose all the steps to superstructure trading in details here. You learn this trading methodology completely. Nothing's left unturned. In fact, the table of contents go over everything in detail. The first chapter talks about trend strength, the basic measure move, the retracement at point C. Okay, number two is very important because we talk about how structures work together, the dominant and the supporting structures. After that, everything you want to know about Fibonacci ratios, what are retracements, what are extent, extensions. Extensions are more way, especially the 461 extension. And here's where everything comes together, Chapter 4. Where to start, where to look here, look here first. How to apply the Fibonacci combinations, weakening trend strength, and how you stack on support. Support means more and more patterns to tell you that it's not going to run away from you. How to enter the trade, managing the day trading, how to handle government reports. Okay, give you three case studies on gold, silver. I mean, silver, British pound, and, and uh, Russell. Then there are these partial patterns that are very, very powerful as well. Okay, these are not full-blown Fibonacci uh, uh, patterns, but they're very good. Okay, for those of you who don't know, you ask how much is this entire trading methodology? Well, students have paid me over $5,000 for it, and some of them are very, very happy, okay? Now, as a mentoring student, you'll be paying $500 an hour for learning this uh, method. It would take two to four hours just for me to explain it to you. It will cost between one to 2000 But what if I were to charge you less than an hour of my time to learn this entire system? Ready for an unbelievable offer? I've set the price at only two ninety-seven. Great bargain. But now I'm going to knock a full two hundred dollars off, making this entire system. I want to share this with as many people as possible. This is only ninety-seven dollars. This ebook with the complete methodology explained. And you also get an unconditional sixty-day money-back guarantee. Okay, but there's even more good news. For a limited time only, if you learn best visually, I'm going to throw in what I call the video companion. This one allows you to actually watch the chapters in full details. Very, very powerful once you understand it. This video companion has six chapters all explained in video format broken down and is yours free. So now you have a, the ebook and the video companion. $494 value for only $97. Now, this is a great, great way to learn. And again, I'm so confident that in 60 days, if you don't want it, it costs you absolutely nothing. So again, the ebook and the video companion for $97. But here's more good news. You can, you can contact me at superstructuretraining.com if you have any questions, by the way. Here's even more good news. I can teach a man to fish or give a man to fish, meaning if you want it be done for you, I will actually conduct, I start, conduct three live webinars a week, 12 per month, okay? Plus, get this, as a special bonus, this is new, I'm going to offer this service called the Skype Trade Calls. Every morning at 6 in the morning, California time, I actually call out the trades. That's right, I call out the trades and say, buy here, sell there, here's what I'm going to do. I give you the actual trades in advance, all right? Now, let me give you an example of what I mean by that. Here's the actual Skype thing that I took a snippet off, okay? This was the gold trade, okay? Short in gold, 1261. Now, for Bowles, he got in at 1286, and down here he says, yeah, he made $500 on this one gold contract. Let me show you what that is. 
Remember that gold chart I showed you about that has a downward bias? I showed it here at 1286.1. Ferry Boris showed it here at 1286.9. The high was 1287.2. Down here, he made five bucks, which is $500, five bucks a, a contract on gold. So he showed it, he got out over here when this deep, remember this deep I showed you about? These things showed up and he got out. I actually gave him the answer. He made 500 bucks. Okay, let me show you another one. This is crude oil. Now, let me go back here. Up here, Eric says he was filled at 93.89. I said, I'm trying for 93.99. He got in earlier than I did. I said, filled. Okay, I got filled here. I locked in one tick profits. Okay. Now, Eric here got out. We all looked at 90. 431 to get out now Eric made 42 cents $420 per contract and Chad also got in at 99 where I got in 99 and also out at 31 okay let me see what that looks like okay here's my fill price Eric got in at 93.89 over here he picked that low I wait this one went up here on a pullback I went long over here and so did Chad Another person who was in a Skype call room, and there's the exit area. Okay, so this was an uptrend. Is it a strong uptrend or a weak uptrend? Well, how did it bounce from here? It bounced off with a shallow retracement on off of this low. So there's a lot more upward energy. Okay, so this was worth 320 bucks per contract. Again, get the meat of the move in the middle. So both the educational webinars, 12 a month, and the daily Skype calls are only 247 bucks a month. In one trade, you can make that back. Okay. So I'm offering this for people who either has my ebook and wants to really learn it by coming three times a week and learning it and if they are able to watch it live every morning, I'm here at 6 in the morning till noon California time, 9 till 3, East Coast time, calling out trades as I see the markets unfold. Again, the three markets, they're only 247 a month. You can cancel any time. I have some students who have who's been with me for years. One guy's been signed up since April. Okay, Again, it's, it's a great bargain here for learning and to, if you want to, I'm not telling you what to do. But, you know, people have known to be uh, piggybacking on my trades. This is called giving a man a fish, if you will. Okay. So, again, you get the three educational webinars or 12 a month for only 247 a month. And as a free bonus, you get the daily live Skype instant message trades. Actually, I actually say it out loud, but I also type it in as well for, for the record. Okay. Called out by me. Now, this is limited to the first 15 people only. And we got 10 people signed up already. So it's a fantastic bargain. We will be raising the price soon. Okay. So if you want to lock in a spot and, and, you know, really learn it with both hands, if you will, sign up for a couple of months and see, and see how these calls are. Okay. There's usually about three trades a, uh, a day. The first trade is the best. The second two are, you know, middle of the day, lunchtime trade, if you will, and they're smaller trades. But between Wednesday and Thursday and Friday, we had nine winning trades in a row. So Tuesday was a losing trade followed by a winning trade. So both Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday were all winning trades. And again, some guy made 400 bucks, you know, 500 bucks per contract. Okay, so here's my email. You can contact me. So again, your choice. If you haven't gotten the ebook yet, I suggest you getting the ebook for only $97, 60 day money back guarantee, plus the video companion, all six chapters explained in video format. Superstructuretraining.com slash ebook. Now, if you got the ebook already, I highly encourage you to sign up for the educational service to take your understanding of superstructure even further. You actually come, get to come to three webinars a week, Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays in the afternoon, California time after the market closes but every morning five days a week I call out these Skype services now this is a little bit brand new I thought they would 
I never would like to do that because I want to focus on my own trades and I don't want people you know, uh, bothering me when I'm trading. I've learned based on a lot of students begging me to actually call out trades live that I'm offering this for a limited time only. Now, why 15 people? My thinking is that if there's too many people asking questions, typing in, all that, you know, I might be distracted from my own trading. That's where I make my money. Okay? So again, superstructuretrading.org slash webinar dash sales page to sign up for only two forty seven a month. If you have any questions, contact me at Ken at superstructuretrading.com. So right now I'm going to take questions. I'm done with my presentation part of showing you this week's trades using superstructure trading of the trades that I call out. Uh, let me answer some questions right now, everybody. George says, what are the, what's the difference between superstructure trading and harmonics, <coughs> harmonics trading? Superstructure trading is a, a lot more <coughs> uh, finer details. It has a, a lot of similarities. It's, it's harmonics trading taken to a higher level, <coughs> I think. Because every wiggle, every pattern, every iota of what they call harmonics trading is addressed. Every piece is addressed. There are no unaddressed part of the chart. Where do you start? Where's the legitimate ending place? Where's the potential target zone to take profits? All of those things are not left wide open. We have a preliminary zone to take profits or preliminary zone to get in, actually. And then as the market gets closer and closer, we fine tune it using a lot of the slowing down of trend tools that I share in the ebook. So it's a lot more finer tuned. Uh, do you look at order flows to confirm your? <laughs> I don't look at order flows. I have some students who do, and they do real well. I do not look at that. Will you be trading all of December? Most of December, I'll be trading. Of course, the week of the holidays, I'll take a week off, uh, Thanksgiving and Christmas. Those weeks, I'm gone. Do you keep a formal track record? I don't keep a formal track record because this has just been around for a couple of weeks. But there have been more winners than losers, I'll tell you that. Off the top of my head, 75, 80% winners on high quality trades. The afternoon scalping trades, you know, for you know, 10, 12 ticks could be more risky. Does superstructure trade other wave analysis? <laughs> it sort of fits in. It's, it's in the same ballpark, let's put it that way. <laughs> but the approach to finding an entry is completely different. It is in agreement with the Elliott Wave analysis. It's in agreement with how the market unfolds in waves. I agree with that. But to, in order to find which wave, I don't call it wave one or wave five, I don't go into that type, I don't name it that way, but it's the same attitude, if you will. But the fine tuning of it comes from Fibonacci extreme extensions. Okay, good question, you guys. <clears throat> so, the the concept is similar, okay? Uh, this is new in, in, in terms of almost like a combination of the harmonics trading and the uh, Elliott Wave. Uh, a little bit of GAN, but not that much GAN, okay? Uh, and the reason why I say like GAN is that GAN has a way of calling a high or a low in advance. And superstructure trading allows you to do that. That's why in the Skype calls, I say, there's a zone, I'll be buying on the zone, I'll be shorting the zone, getting it closer, I think I'll adjust it one tick higher. I'll, I'll say that. And then as it gets closer and closer, boom, I hit, I put a stop in, and I manage to see it turn, and then adjust my entry, my, my stop loss. Okay. What instruments do you trade during the day? Three, three main ones, gold, S&P, and crude oil. Now. It used to be S&P, but now crude oil is my main one. And the other two, I like gold as well. Gold can have fast starts and slow down, okay? Fast, uh, a little bit schizophrenic. But once it moves, it moves quick. The S&P has been such a, a grind lately, but it's been coming back with higher volatility. So I like that also. Okay, Ken, you are now, 
how how you draw the fib extensions covered in the ebook was confused in the webinar. Where are you originating the extension from? Oh, the extension is from B to C. <laughs> okay, the B to C extension. Can you show that, Ken? Can you show yeah. that on the chart? Okay, let me show you. Okay. Great. All right, let me show you. Let me show you. Uh, I'll go back to uh, to the daily chart of sugar. Okay. Now, here's sugar, and this is A. This is B. And this is C. The B C leg gets extended up. This is another little A B C. This is a measure move, supporting measure move, supporting this big one. That B C leg, B C leg is extended up also. Okay. So let me draw the gram. A B C. This B C leg is multiplied by 261, I'm not sorry, 461.8% added to point C, and we extend up to see where my uh, 461 is. So again, from B down to C, extending up. A lot of the charting services has this as a standard feature. They call it a replacement feature. But if you retrace more than 100%, it becomes what I call the extension of the BC range. Would, would combining candlestick make, make it better? <clears throat> I, I don't use candlesticks, okay? But I see a lot of people using candlesticks because candlesticks allow them to see red and green colors, okay? And that allows them to see whether it's going up or down. But I can see it going up or down by seeing it going up and down, right? So I, I don't... Again, that's part of my idea of not distracting it with too many other colorful things. But you can certainly do that. Uh, Franklin, it's, I'm concentrating on SST applied to binaries. Which binaries come to play when you have provide? I have not, I've not done anything with binaries yet, Frank. <clears throat> I've never done anything with binaries yet. That's interesting. And a binary is relatively new. Robert says, okay, so the original point is always C. Well, it's the BC range, but that's why point C is so important. Point C is also how deep is the retreatment. But the BC leg is what we can extend up or down. Again, fully totally explained in the book. So, again, just to go over what we have for you, you can have the Skype calls and the learning curve of uh, coming to attend the webinars. By the way, these webinars are recorded and uploaded the following day, so you can view them over the weekend if you happen to be at work or somewhere else while I'm holding these webinars uh, for you. You can come to these webinars live and then ask questions, of course. But uh, the morning Skype calls are, are very, very exciting. People love them because they can see these things unfold. I reference the chapters in the book, and they can learn faster. And then they can come to the webinar in the afternoon as well. If you you know have the time to do that, okay. So what you want to do, uh, if you want to get started, is to get the ebook and learn about it. Uh, SuperstructureTraining.com/ebook. Uh, I suggest uh, getting both, only because you will really immerse yourself and open your eyes to a new way of uh, looking at the market. You can always email me again at Ken at SuperstructureTraining.com. All right, more questions. Uh, Mariano, today you only showed 461. How, how did the 261 come in? <clears throat> Remember, 261 and the 461 are the two that I use. Of the two, the 461 is the most extreme. So if you're trading a 261, keep in mind that it can still slip into further out into the 461, okay? So is the 261 a good area? It's okay. Would it slip a little bit further to the 461? If you have trend strength, it could do that. But if you have a whole bunch of 461s, like we saw in sugar, okay, 
there's no way of escaping the zone. That's it. That's the area. Now, let me show you, if I put a bunch of 261s there, due to what I call local bullish trend strength, it's going to stretch the 261, okay? It's like saying, I thought the marathon is 26 miles. How come that guy keeps on running? Well, if, he, if, he's, if he's so strong and so fit, he may not want to stop at 26. He might want to go another 10 miles. He might be crazy, but because he's able to do that, he might do that. That might not be a good example. But the point is that, you know, the, the further out area where the thing actually dies and, and turns around, like in this sugar thing, is where a bunch of extreme 461s are. Okay. Uh, how do you pick the <coughs> price bar for your entry? <coughs> okay. Uh, hang on. Hang on. Uh, uh, Sunil. For every entry, do, do we chart out profit target in advance? Yes, yes. I'll tell you, I'll tell you how, how I do that. This is straight out of Chapter 4, Managing a Trade, okay? The, the reason why we want a deep dominant here to extend up is because coming off of the deep dominant, this drop will be a bigger magnitude than if this was shallow. If this was a shallow retracement, this can only drop down shallow. Okay, how deep is deep? Fifty percent. So once you get short over here, you would, I would think, minimally as a preliminary target, it would have to go fifty percent, if not more. Okay. Now in this case, in this case, you can see that it went to the sixty-one point eight percent. Because a deep dominant draws it down. Now, that makes a good risk-reward ratio, isn't it? So you don't have to pick a high over here to go short. You can wait until it rolls over over here, visible on a 15-minute chart, and then write it down and take the sweet spot of the move. You know there's a target here, but you also want to watch how the trend strength is getting there. If it's still a lot, a lot more strength like this, as opposed to deep, well, small deeps over here, then you see that this has more move to go so yes you have a preliminary target and that's why we want a high quality trade having a deep dominant uh, Robert means okay what I need hang on I'm gonna stop recording here